Hey, welcome back to Fish Out Northwest. We're here in the Bait Lab for this week's How To. Uh, the Bait Lab installments are presented by Max Lure. Almost forgot what I was going to say. Max Lure. Uh, check out everything they have going on at maxlure.com. Now, with that, Tommy, this week we are talking about resident coho. And for good reason, there is a lot of them up there in Area 10. There are a few getting caught, Areas 11 and 13. But for some reason, and we're going to get to the bottom of that as well, uh, Puget Sound Fisheries Manager is going to jump on board with us here in about a week or so. We're going to talk about this resident coho, where they come from and what they're all about. But what you need to know is some simple tips on how to put presentations in front of these fish that are going to make them want to bite. We just got off the phone with Matt uh, Messing, Messing Around Fishing Charters, last segment. And he's talking about some days it's just lights out, other days you're marking plenty of fish on your sonar difficult to get them to snap so I can tell you this in my and this is me experience out there for the last several years targeting resident coho I tend to stick with smaller baits we're talking about three on a good day upwards of five pound fish classic you know resident uh, Puget Sound coho at this time of year three to four pounds why not scale it down put something in front of them that's going to attract them draw them draw them in not push them away let's start with the rod and reel you know what we're jumping with uh, kokanee rod for good reason. I talk about how exciting and fun it is. Tommy will experience this one day when he grows up. But kokanee in destination fisheries that are in that three to five pound range on kokanee rods is a is just a great experience. These coho are you know great biters, great fighters, and to get them on a nine and a half, ten foot salmon rod just kind of is a buzzkill. Do yourself a favor, use kokanee rods out there. Kokanee rods are designed to be put into downriggers. It's a downrigger fishery. Use a kokanee rod, spool it up with 40 pound uh, braided line, okay? Put a top shot on there of about 30 feet because that's a good distance to, for your setback. So I put a top shot on of no more than 40, typically 30 feet of 20 pound fluorocarbon, okay? The reason I go with 20 pound is because you will, every once in a while, hook a Chinook. Now they may not be the real big Chinook because you're not you can if you want to, but I don't typically go deep because I want to stay off of the 10 plus pound Chinook on my kokanee rods. So I'm really trying to target the upper water column and go after the small resident coho. If you do get that bigger Chinook, eight or 10 pounds, you got 40 pound braid on, you got 20 pound uh, monofilament top shot, and you're gonna run a 15 pound test leader. You can get those fish in. Uh, the biggest takeaway there is you're not giving up a bunch of gear, you're not losing your flashers, you're not losing your spoons, you're not losing your gear. Every time you hook a Chinook and break them off, it's costing you money and that's not what we're in for. So go with your kokanee rods, 40 pound braid, 20 pound top shot, no longer than 30 feet, 15 pound leader, tie your rigs up on two aught hooks, perfect size for these, the size of fish we're targeting. I go with the eight inch flashers simply because of less drag. I don't need an 11 inch rotating flasher out there. These eight inch Pearl Trolls work fantastic. The chrome works really well. The pink and white, uh, it has UV and glow, okay, on both sides. The Herring Aid is a no brainer. Works in the adult version, 11 inch. These eight inch rotators or these eight inch flashers uh, with the blinky work as well also. All of these caught fish the other day, every one of them. And Really what set us apart and what I think made the difference is a little alteration I did to the lures. Now, if we look at our spoons, we got our herring aid patterns, we got our pink scale, we got our solid pink, we got cop car. Some of these I put small two inch hoochies behind, always favorable when targeting coho and especially pink salmon, which will be coming in later on. Any of these patterns will work. And I stay with the number two or size two because again, we don't need to have the full three or four inch size spoons when we're targeting two, three, four pound fish. So I go with these number twos or size two. Coho killers work fantastic. Kingfisher spoons work fantastic. And I stick pretty much with this base of colors right here. Why? Because I'm trying to match the hatch. Herring aid pattern matches the two inch herring that are very predominant in Puget Sound right now. And anything pink, especially these little pink squids, are replicating all the krill that's in the water. So you got the UV, you got the glow, you got the flash. You got the, uh, the action of the squid or the little hoochies on the lures. 
that's gonna just entice the bite. The color patterns match, the size of presentation matches, okay? So the spoons work great, but when the spoons stop working, there's a couple things you can do. We're gonna stay small, we're gonna scale it down. These Ace High Fly Juniors, okay? If you haven't used them or haven't found them, Ace High Fly comes in a variety of sizes. You got the full size Ace High Fly, you got the Ace High Fly Needlefish, which is what uh, this is right here. This is a herring aid pattern Ace High Fly Needlefish. This is your Ace High Fly herring aid pattern. This is the Junior, okay? It's about a two inch. It's got a hard nose on it like an Ace High Fly. Uh, and the colors are basically identical. The differences here are the length of the presentation, essentially is what's going on. And the profile, okay? The Ace High Fly, when it's drugged through the water, will narrow down, all right? And if you think about those two inch herring right now, two and a half inch herring, it's a very skinny little short piece of fish. These Ace High Fly Juniors work, but keep in mind it has kind of a bell at the base of the head, which presses or pushes out or flares out the tentacles coming off that lure. So the profile in the water is actually a little wider. Doesn't make a difference. I don't know, the fish aren't talking, but you have to assume that this will definitely give you a wider profile. This will give you a more narrow profile. Basically all I'm doing is I'm taking these Ace High Fly Minis, these Juniors, I'm tying a mooching rig, so to speak, with two odd hooks. I put a two finger width spacing between those hooks. I put a bead on top that rests against the bell underneath these Ace High Fly Juniors and set that down on there. The only thing I change is I'm putting a bead on there as a bearing and I'm using a .08 size Max Lure Smile Blade, okay? On the pink ones, we had great success with the pink sparkle. Okay, that's these little guys right here, this pink sparkle. Again, it's the .08. We don't need to go with a big smile blade. We're simply going with the .08 because we're adding a little extra flash, a little extra action, vibration, and color. This chrome scale worked out well. This uh, pink mirror finish worked out very well. I think the, the takeaway for the day, though, was the purple haze matched with the pink Ace High Fly Junior. This was a great combination, okay? Here's an example of that. That's that pink with that purple haze. The other one that worked really well, uh, probably my favorite, is the one I actually have tied on the, on the rod right here. This is the Ace High Fly Junior with the Smile Blade, and that is a UV, it's the, it's the fin, the what? Yes, thank you, the Moon Jelly. I knew it's the Moon Jelly. So. The moon jelly on that finish with that particular little unit right there. Now, other things that you could do, this is the Ace High Fly. Again, I told you it's a little bit narrower in its profile. Um, if you don't wanna fish the full length, this one here was simply cut back to two and a half inches. It's gonna resemble that narrow, slender little profile and shortened so it doesn't look too long and out of place. It also has the moon jelly, which creates that flash. The other thing I did, this one worked very well also, is I took, it's basically a two inch uh, squid. It's a mini hoochie. It's the two inch size. Um, inserted is a glow, okay? Same exact size, same exact pattern basically, but it's the glow with the herring aid pattern pulled over the top. So now I have glow, I got UV, I got the herring pattern, I have the flash of the moon jelly, smile blade. Um, they all worked. They all work. The key here, I believe, and Tommy and I were kind of talking about it at the start of uh, the show tonight, that little smile blade on there gives an infrequent, uh, not, a, not a steady cadence, but a random cadence of flash. In nature, nothing goes in straight lines, nothing is uh, you know, specifically on time. It's all random, and drug behind this eight inch rotating flasher, you have it whipping around, you have it catching light at different intervals, uh, that thing is wiggling back and forth, darting up and down. It's the colors that they're eating right now with the pinks and the UVs and the, the herring aid patterns. And then it has that periodic flash, what makes it totally look like it should be there in nature, okay? Not saying it's an absolute must, just saying as far as options. Other things you are fishing, perhaps you're not finding good success up there. Maybe you're running five inch hoochies like Matt and just not finding success. Uh, scale it down, go smaller, small spoons, Make sure you use your Potsky's Fire Gel. Herring on the back of these spoons does wonders. When I'm running these hoochies, I put 
my scent on my flasher. Some guys don't do that. I say, why not? You can wash it up with lemon joy soap each and every time, completely remove that scent. I'll use the shrimp. I'll put some anise on there at times. I'll use the herring for sure, especially when I'm running herring patterns on these small hoochies. I put herring fire gel on my Dodger or my flasher and it works fantastic. So hopefully those tips right there are gonna help you in the next several weeks finding some success on these small resident coho. They're a kick in the pants. They taste fantastic on the grill. Kokanee rods, eight inch flashers, small presentation. Go get yourself some and have a good time doing it. <laughs>